when you wrestle for the WWE, you're not wrestling in front of a hundred people. You're not wrestling in front of five. You're thousands of people. Um, so you you have to almost lose a certain amount of like. You, there's no fear. You can't have fear walking out there because those people will see it and they will eat you up. It'll be on Worldwide Pay-Per-View the final weekend of August. I'm here with a man who will go toe-to-toe with Tyrus coming up here for NWA 74. You may know him on the worldwide stage of WWE, but it's all about the NWA. Trevor Murdoch, how you feeling, buddy? Good, man. How are you? Uh, you got a real one coming up here. This, is, this isn't this is a slouch. Uh, no, Tyrus no. is a legitimate hand here to deal with, right? For sure. Um, Billy Corgan has... Uh, made his his decision when it comes to what he wants as a championship match. Mm -hmm. His only concern is the NWA and the NWA world titles. So he wants to make sure that he gives the fans the biggest and the best. And uh, he didn't he didn't fool around this time. You put a, a monster of a man like Tyrus in front of me. Uh, that would be a test for anybody. And he'll definitely be the biggest test I've ever had. Mm -hmm. Now, is this one of the biggest guys you've actually got in the ring? Like physically, the biggest. Um, the, the next two guys closest would be Big Show and Kane, and I was a young Greenhorn wrestling those guys, uh, at, and they were in the, obviously in the peak physical condition, so they threw me around like a rag doll, even 6'4", 250 at the time. Uh, I'm a little bit smarter, a little bit wiser, a little bit older, a little bit thicker. Um, Tyrus is, you know, he's definitely going to be my biggest challenge, man. I, you know... Don't expect when you watch me and Tyrus to watch a technical masterpiece of pro wrestling. Do not expect to watch a high spot fest. I can almost lay money on it. The fact that we're going to go in there and just beat the shit out of each other and, and test to see who the toughest guy is. I know Tyrus carries a lot of pride with the NWA, especially for the world heavyweight title. And he wants to be world heavyweight champion. So he's going to go in there and do whatever he can to overcome me um i just gotta do my best to bob and weave the big ones and and throw punches and bunches after that punches and bunches if it rhymes it works right <laughs> right hey brother it's about <laughs> all you're gonna get when it comes to smooth character shit from me <laughs> smooth character shit that's a new t that's a new t-shirt it writes Bruh. itself hopefully it'll sell a million dollars man <laughs> Um, tell me about your upbringing. You are you are a student of the game from Harley Race. You are a product of his school of wrestling, and that that's implied. Uh, arguably one of the toughest men to ever lace him up. Uh, a former NWA World Champion, and and you have to hold that title now. You hold it again. Uh, how does it feel to hold that world title that the man who brought you into the business held? That's a special bond. Oh, for sure. Um, no, not none of his students can. I'm the only one that that went through his his schooling, and I'm the only world champion out of the bunch. Um, I hold I hold a lot of pride, a lot of respect for that world title. Um, it's also a lot of pressure too, because not only do I carry a company and and the future, what's moving forward with the company, I carry the past. I carry the the respect and the pride of the men who carried this title before me, and Harley was one of them. Um, he was a no nonsense character. He 100% was the world heavyweight champion, even when he even even when he lost the title, he was not afraid to let you know that he was still world champion. Um, and he expected the same, I guess, outlook and, and, and aggressiveness when it came to his students when he was training. He wanted guys that had heart. You know, um, I remember the first three months of training with him, I got sick every single day. And that's not an exaggeration. It was almost, you know, became a little running joke where everybody was kind of looking at the clock. All right, Trevor's about, he's about 30 minutes, 40 minutes into calisthenics. It's coming, guys, we're coming. And Harley be sitting on his couch, you know, smoking a cigarette, just laughing. And, you know, <laughs> I'm working my ass off, blown up, just sucking wind. And there's cigarette smoke in there. And you can't, what are you going to say to Harley? Like, oh, you're choking me up, man. You know, you can't. But uh, sure enough, you know, it would come and I'd run outside. I'd get sick. I'd run back in, grab the, uh, the bucket, the mop bucket we had. I had to fill it up with water, splash it on the puke because we, the school was right in the middle of town like main street so you couldn't just like go out and puke in the street and just leave it there like that's you know that's just not 
you know, it's just gross, you know. <laughs> so he would have us get a bucket of water and splash it on it, and then I would have to I'd do that, and I'd run back in and try to catch up with everybody and, and their calisthenics. And for me, that was an everyday occurrence. It was I knew what I was I knew I was going to get sick. I knew what was ahead of me, but I didn't care. I just kept doing it and kept doing it to the point where I physically got myself in in the shape that I needed to be. That was wasn't an issue. But what I didn't know was like that whole time I was gaining Harley's respect each time because he knew that I was giving him everything I had. Like when a man is outside puking on all four, he can't give you any more than what his body will allow him to. Um, and the fact that where a lot of guys would come in afterwards and they'd whine and moan and they'd put on a show, oh, I don't know, I can't keep up. I was running back in sucking wind cussing myself and him laughing at me while I'm like, God, this sucks. Oh, Harley, this sucks so bad. And, you know, I never gave up. And that's where I think I garnered my respect for him or his respect from, from him to me. Mm -hmm. Hard as nails. The Harley stories. Everyone everyone has these insane stories, and thank you for sharing that one here. Uh, the NWA. Wrestling is in this wild place. It was before the pandemic, and it's continuing to heat up with all these different things. Obviously, WWE has made some massive changes, and you learned a lot there. What did you gain from your experience in WWE that you can now apply to the NWA? Not to say, oh, it's smaller, it's less than. It's a different challenge. There's something you can see. There's a way that you get to see from the cheapest seat to the front row that you can apply to what you're doing now. There's things that people learn in WWE that they apply elsewhere in wrestling. What have you gained from that that you now apply to what you do in NWA? Um, one of the things is like when you wrestle for the WWE, you're not wrestling in front of 100 people. You're not wrestling in front of five. You're thousands of people um so you you have to almost lose a certain amount of like you there's no fear you can't have fear walking out there because those people will see it and they will eat you up so at wrestling for the wa garnered a lot of confidence for me if i can go wrestle for them if i can go wrestle in front of seventy-eight thousand people if i can go wrestle in front of 3.2 million people at home every monday night like i can i can do anything um, the other thing, too, is, you know, uh, WWE is a well-oiled machine, and they have perfected virtually everything when it comes to the marketing end of it, character end of it, what you need to do to to stand out and, and brand yourself. Um, I didn't get that education until I got to WWE. Um, God love Harley. He was focused on the pro wrestling end of it, and maybe not so much of the, the business business end of pro wrestling um so i learned a lot there and i've taken that now working for a company that is <clears throat> excuse me is slowly building its way back up and and becoming a a name brand wrestling company i'm taking those things i learned from there and applying it to nwa and it's making me stand out i'm when i go to nwa i'm i i do things that i know worked on a larger scale for, for WWE. And mm -hmm. in turn, they're working for the NWA. Um, the thing is though, like with the NWA, it's it's almost in its different entity. And what a lot of people may not understand is there's a very hands-off approach from the NWA office and its wrestlers. And what I mean by that is, is they have an idea on, uh, what Billy has an idea on, he goes, you know what? I'd really like to see this matchup. And we'll just throw me and Tyrus together. All right, guys, I'm going to have you guys wrestle each other. You guys go out there and do your magic. You're the wrestlers. This is what I've hired you for. Go out there and wrestle and steal the show. There's no one in the back trying to micromanage it, trying to create something that is, is almost forced upon the people. Um, as a pro wrestler, to be a successful pro wrestler, you have to be able to change on the fly. You have to be able to react on the fly. Um, you cannot, quote unquote, none of us are mind readers. So I have no idea what the fans are feeling, thinking, wanting. It changes every single night. Mm -hmm. So how can I go in the back and plan a whole match, 20, 30 minutes, and, and go out there in front of the people and try to force feed them that match, whether I think it's great or not, they might not think it's great. They may not like it. So as a talent, I have to go out there and change on the fly so I can create that magic. NWA is very hands-off. You go out there, wrestle. Go beat Trevor. 
I remember real quick. I remember a, a slight conversation I had with Billy when he hired me, and um, I said, "What? What do you?" And when I mean Billy, Billy Corgan, Smashing mm-hmm. Pumpkin. So, what do you want from me? And he goes, "What do you mean?" I go, "Well, you know, you brought me in. You have an idea, obviously. Like, what do you want from <clears throat> from me to do? You want me to wrestle some of your young guys? You want? Because I just want you to be you." And I was like, "Yeah, but like, what part of me do you want?" Like you know what? What are you looking for? Like, is it because you were just so used to like in in WWE? Like we we have a role and we know you can play this role and this is the role we're going to plug you into. And and whereas there they're like we understand that you can play any role, but we want you to craft that yourself and go out there. Pretty much. And and what a lot of people don't know too is like a lot of other promoters and other companies, whether it be larger companies, whether it be independent promotions, they all try to run in that same that same business model of micromanaging knowing where everything is so everything's got to be picture perfect and i've never been in a fight that was picture perfect um so he billy lets us go out there and create craft that magic because he trusts us and know that that and and he trusts in our ability to go out there and tell the story to the fans that's needed um Mm -hmm. excuse me i'll give you one more example um we're kind of pulling, pulling, pulling the curtain off all this shit here. <laughs> um, I'll do it right now. <laughs> just see, I, uh, I had a match with Tom Latimer. Um, uh, maybe we're probably maybe going on maybe a year or so ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got not one lick of offense. I'm talking, I didn't even swing for a punch and Tom ducked. Um, and at the end of it, Tom shoots me in the corner. I move out of the way, and I'm able to roll him up for the one, two, three. And the crowd goes nuts. But what no one knows is there was a conversation about this before, and we had I brought this idea to Billy. And at first, Billy's like, so you're not, Trevor, you're not going to do, you're not doing anything but just getting beat up for a whole four solid, four and a half minutes, whatever. Mm-hmm. I said, yeah. He said, you're not going to swing a punch. You're not going to throw a clothesline. You're not going to do nothing. Mm-mm. Nothing. Nope, nothing. I'm not even going to go for an eye poke. Nothing. And I, he had this really concerned look on his face. And he's trying to picture this. But he's not a wrestler. He's never stepped in the ring as a wrestler. So it's a little bit difficult for him. But where I have my respect for him is he looked up at us. He goes, if you think this can work, then go do it. And that's all I need. I needed the trust. I needed the, I'm not sure, Trevor, but I trust you. I don't, I'm not sure about the idea, but I trust you. So if you believe it, you see it, you can do it, go do it. And Tom, Tom, consummate pro, knew exactly what story we were trying to paint, what we were trying to accomplish in this. And he knew that it didn't matter um, how many punches, kicks, clothesline, big bumps, whatever. It was the story that was important. And we went out there, and from literally the time I put my second foot in the ring, Tom is eating my lunch. I mean, bouncing me all over the ring, kicking my ass. And the fans are on this roller coaster of emotions because at first they're like, oh, this is awesome. There's so much action. But then Tom continues this action, continues this aggression. How can they keep doing it? Right. And now the sympathy is starting to come into play for me because they're like, up trevor like you're getting you're getting fucking manhandled and and then they start thinking oh shit, okay trevor now it's like they start it, it's, a, it's a roller coaster now they're like okay trevor you got to start fighting back now now you got to keep coming because tom being the vicious and i mean he is just on not giving me one inch there is nothing i can do about it and the fans have no idea that we're not saying anything we're not we're not doing anything but telling a story and they are and down and up and down and by the time tom shoots me in the corner and i move and i roll him up one two three and i roll out to the floor and i'm had my ass kicked tom's going nuts mad out of his mind because he just lost this match that he had every single thing in and the fans are going crazy and all because i was able to say put my ego aside and realize hey listen this is a better story and we could do something different here and the fans loved every minute of still talk about the match 
and not one punch on my on on the baby face's end was thrown not one not one chop nothing but you couldn't do that in some other companies because yeah. they they would view that as it being uh maybe weak maybe uh you know you're killing yourself off they would they focus too much on the the, the the outside bullshit it was the story and when we walked out of there tom didn't lose anything i didn't lose anything and the people thought they just watched the the, the first half of wrestlemania it's it's all about the story and so that's it reverts it goes back to to the nwa and billy like they let us tell that story that's why we're standing out that's why the nwa stands out that's why we're still alive because when people watch our match you could never watch pro never watch an nwa show click on our show and be able to follow every single thing from start to finish and understand what's going on and be excited about what's happening that next week mm-hmm. it's hard to follow some other companies in pro wrestling right now because things change hell changes within the show and you come back to watch next week and you're like well i didn't even know such and such even came back or did this you know what i mean mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a crazy time it's turbulent yes, uh, sorry NWA i went on a little on... tangent there <laughs> that's all right i i enjoy it i'm under the i'm under the learning tree man i appreciate it a uh, lot more action on the show matt cardona bully ray and many many more will all be a part of nwa 74 you can get all the information at nationalwrestlingalliance.com that's nationalwrestlingalliance.com on pay-per-view two nights, August 27th and 28th. Tickets available as well in the St. Louis area. It's going to be at the Coruscant Ballroom. Coruscant. Plaza. Coruscant, Coruscant Ballroom. There we go. The, I, only, I, 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 the only reason I got it, this red I got it, because I heard Harley say it a hundred times. Coruscant <laughs> Ballroom. Coruscant You're the Ballroom. Coruscant Ballroom. Okay, yes. up, I, yeah. I bring your puke bucket. You're going to need it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I really wish he was here. Like, I think he would be really proud of what we're doing and what's going on with the NWA. And uh, I know that if he was still around, he would probably be sitting front row watching what's happening. With a cigarette. They, and uh, no one well, would ask him to put it out. No, no. <laughs> I'll, light it. I'll light it for him. I'm like, here you go. <laughs> Smoke up, big dog. <laughs> Trevor Murdoch, if they want to follow you on the socials, where do they go? At the Real T Murdoch on Twitter and Facebook, or on Twitter and Instagram, and on Facebook. I'm blessed to have a little blue check mark next to my name. So, there you go. Thank you so much. Check it out. NWA 74 coming up here this last weekend. Get all the info at NationalWrestlingAlliance.com. Thank you so much. And if you enjoyed this interview, we got a whole lot more. Check them all out on our channel on on, on YouTube and our podcast as well. Thanks so much, Trevor. Thank you.